Today I'm briefly going to talk about this. This is a lock made by Kensington. There's the key with a little logo on it there. And it, Kensington normally make laptop locks that secure laptops in what is called the Kensington adapter. But this is actually to secure more than one item of electrical equipment together at once. This is a pack you get with it and these little bits go into the Kensington adapters and then you string the cable through the holes and secure several pieces of electronic equipment together at once. So this should be more secure really than the laptop locks which aren't very good. It's a 7 pin tubular core, it's 7.5mm so it's not quite standard, I'd call standard 7.8mm. And let me see the cord as well, fine. Now, one interesting feature is this little nose on the end of the key. Now, there's a hole at 12 o'clock, you can see then, I think. And what happens is if you come along with your regular tubular pick, I'll reset this, then that hole keeps down get it in there that little nose there we go got it that little nose on the end of the key keeps down the driver pin in chamber one and I think we can see there you can see the driver pin in chamber one has now popped up into the hole thus blocking the lock so the idea is the lock is now booked and you can't open it but it stays secure now uh, it's a good idea to trap pin essentially but I've seen people pick these locks and I've managed it once or twice if you're quick and smooth with your action on your pick you can get it past the driver trap flying into the hole but uh, unfortunately because it is just the driver pin of chamber one you can just push it back down again so uh, in this case, I'd use what I call a Kensington adapter, which is that there. Now, it's just the key, or a key, that I've taken the nib off, but anything could be used here. A suitable size bit of metal, like a paper clip, or anything really. Paper, it even doesn't have to be metal. So then, you insert your Kensington adapter can be a bit fiddly to get it in the hole <laughs> but once it's in there you continue as normal let's use this let's prod it down into the hole there we go so now we're in the trap position on pin one and we can insert our tool as before And now we can go all the way to 90 degrees and the lock comes off. Oops. Sorry, cheap and lovely. Not cheap and nasty, these are quite nice. Cheap and nasty tubular picks. I'll reset it again. There we go, back to 12 o'clock. And I'll just take the Kensington adapter out. So that's picking the lock. You can single pin pick it as well, if you want to. But that is how you'd go about using a self-impression tool but there's a worse problem with this lock uh, if I can demonstrate I'll take this top off the back here I don't know if you can see those shutters okay, so the shutters are out now now they're in now they're out now they're in no shutters are on springs so that you can just clip the cable in and away you go. And when I was looking at this lock for problems, got me to thinking, uh, well, if those shutters are just on springs, then maybe I can wrap those springs back. So the idea is uh, I tap it, not hard, tap it gently-ish, well, you know, how much, however much force it needs in order to bounce those springs back and just take the lock off. Um, but unfortunately what happened was something different. 
So, and I promise, I wa here's the big lock pick. It's featured in one of my other videos, opening a couple of master padlocks. Same trick. You hit them, the spring compresses, and, and in the case of the master padlocks, the shackle pops open. But uh, I was put in, just a little pressure on, and tink, 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 not even hard. Oh. Oh, shit. That's not supposed to happen. So far from wrapping. So what's happened here? I haven't wrapped the springs back at all. Um, hitting it. And not even hitting it hard. I promise you, it did not take much force. It's deformed a component within the lock. I don't know which one because I've not taken it apart. But uh, all of a sudden, this cap on the end doesn't fit right. I've taken the little band off the middle here so we can see. This cap is meant to sit down a little lower than it is. So something's forced in there and it's it's made it so that so even worse you can do that and then you can pop it back on and it's as if nothing's happened there's no tamper evidence picking attack attempt um but once that's been forced you can then just pull it off. So this is quite a bad flaw. Uh, the one thing that should have been tested with a lock like this is hitting it in that direction. Now, like I said, I didn't hit it hard. I was trying to bounce the springs back, not trying to twat it into oblivion and knock it off. Um, so, yeah, not cool. Don't don't use this to secure multiple electronic items, whatever you do. And that's about that's about all I've got to say about this particular Kensington lock.